Okay, moving right along here, got the drain done. Uh, concreted in that void, uh, created from the saw cutting of the concrete. Uh, packed in uh, that piping there after uh, water testing the drain with sand and then uh, filled the last four inches or so with concrete. Made sure my drain was perfectly level both ways. That's important. And then as you can see, I got the framing done. So I'm all ready for hot mop. Let me uh, talk to you a little bit about the curb. Uh, the curb, as you can see, is bottom piece is pressure treated over slab, which is kind of typical. I use very dry pressure treated lumber. I, I would never bolt in a, a wet piece of pressure treated. A lot of times uh, it comes out of the lumber yard kind of wet and moist and heavy. I let the pressure treated dry out, make sure it's straight, make sure I got two really straight dried out studs to stack on top. Pressure treated is affixed to the concrete with half inch by three inch redheads recessed down into the wood. So it goes into the concrete about two and a half inches, tightened down real snug. Uh, before I uh, bolt those in, I uh, use a very, very heavy-duty construction adhesive, uh, not the typical adhesive, uh, adhesive you would find. It's um, a very good product, and some of you guys know uh, how to find those. But uh, just to glue it in and then, you know, bolt it in really good. I've got three locations where I bolted it, the two sides and then in the middle. And uh, that thing ain't going anywhere. And... Secondly, we got the uh, shower area blocked in and pre in preparation for the shower pan. I, you can see that I put in that bench. Uh, that's framed in with pressure tree to the bottom and then um, screwed in. That's the only time I use screws. Uh, I screwed in that three-quarter treated ply over the top. See how it slopes down um, and see how I even got blocking as much as almost 12 inches above the bench. Standard 2 by 12 blocking uh, straight up. <clears throat> from the floor on the floor place rather is standard for when you uh, prepare for hot mop and uh, I put up a couple of nailers one there and then one there and then I framed in this niche so this niche is about a little 48 inches or so uh, it's going to give me a nice uh, decorative aspect I, I couldn't really do much with this wall here because there was just this existing framing which is too ridiculous uh, obviously an old exterior wall. Somebody tried to frame in a window there, but at least the studs are in good shape. They're vert, uh, vertically going all the way up. Uh, this one here is questionable, but for the most part, the framing is good uh, for my substrate before my tile. So I ended up doing this uh, niche location here. And a lot of people say, wow, that's a long and tall niche. Maybe it's a little overkill, but at all, it's a dry wall. You're not going to get a lot of water on it. So, um, I'll show you how to waterproof that. that. That's adjacent, the interior wall of the bedroom. This is a master uh, bedroom here, uh, an ensuite. So I'll show you how to waterproof that drywall. Um, this is an interior wall. This is an exterior wall. I'm gonna, this is actually the next bedroom on the other side of the, of the room. So we're gonna insulate and uh, check our electrical, make sure there's wire protectors like there is there, but not there. Uh, just look over everything, make sure everything's ready to go after my guy comes in and hot mops, because I'm ready for him now. And you'll see uh, on the next phase here how the hot mop goes. And uh, when you do a bench, um, it's pretty much the only method, I, I think, uh, to waterproof your shower. Because uh, you, you're going to have to hot mop that whole area over that bench and uh, over your curb, obviously, onto the, uh, the floor area. I ended up coming in, my, my line that I did before... Um, is about, look as you look at it, maybe two and a quarter, two and a half or something. Um, I'll probably finish slightly um, uh, behind that. I'll probably finish out around, you know, maybe inch and three quarter past that curve with the backer and then the thickness of the tile and the thickness of the hot mop. Uh, that's just to give myself enough room. And then the glass is going to go kind of right in the middle of that. So that'll give me plenty of room. Uh, for the toilet area and then obviously the vanity area too, uh, which is going to be about a 32 inch. And then the toilet I'll probably end up with about 31 inches or so of space. And then inside the shower I've got about a finished area from tile to uh, glass, like I mentioned before, of about 32 inches. So that's, that's plenty of room for everything. Uh, it's kind of pushing it a little bit for the toilet, but you know, you got to work with what you got. Um, I'll explain later uh, why I uh, left that section of drywall there. Well, I can explain now. I, I need to tie into that section. I don't want to lift off that uh, corner aid in underneath that drywall. I want to keep that. So all that will get uh, 
thoroughly waterproofed with the uh, with the backing that I put up and then obviously the shower pan when it gets connected up. So next phase you'll see the shower pan. It's time to call the shower pan guy. He should get out here in a couple days. We'll get him going and uh, go from there.